channel. Today we'll be presenting a case of a 24 year old male who presented to our ER with complaints of acute onset breathing difficulty and spasms of both hands in the past 20 minutes. Okay. On our initial 10 second assessment, the patient was conscious and oriented, but he was anxious and he was hyperventilating. Okay. So can you just go over? Yes. So patient, uh, you just uh, briefly, a 24-year-old male, okay, 24-year-old male, ear complaints of acute onset of breathlessness and spasm of both hands since past 20 minutes. Okay, it's an acute onset breathlessness. Yes. So that is what the patient has presented with and along with here, spasms of both hands. Okay, so uh, what we have done, on analysis one, patient was conscious and oriented, he was anxious. That is again very hyperventilating. So, can you just describe the word hyperventilation? What do you mean by hyperventilating? It's a forceful method to wash out the carbon dioxide. Okay, the forceful expiration or forceful uh, method, and what will happen to the respiratory rate? The respiratory rate is going to be on the higher side or on the lower side? Higher side. Okay, so basically it is increased respiratory rate, or you can call it as tachypnea. But you can also see the accessory muscles being very prominently active and the patient is ventilating faster. So that is basically more of expiratory component is more. Mm -hmm. So that is what uh, we have uh, from the word of hyperventilation. Okay, continue. Coming to the primary survey, mm -hmm. the air, coming to airway, okay. there was no strider or hoarseness of voice. Okay, so patient was speaking in part of the sentence. Okay, so why this is very important? The, why this part? That is why uh, most important part of the discussion will be no strider but hoarseness of voice. Why he should develop? What is the implication that you are considering here? The patient is hyperventilating. Sir. Okay. So there will be PCO2 wash out. Okay. That can lead to a decrease in the ionized calcium levels. Okay. So the pathway is like increased respiratory rate resulting in increased PCO2 wash out. Wash out. Wash out. Then which so, can lead to decrease in the ionized calcium. So, it will result in decrease of calcium that is ionized. Okay, so this ionized, there will be ionized uh, hypocalcemia. That is what you are uh, going to say. So, increase in respiratory rate will lead on to increase in PCO2 washout and decrease in ionized calcium. So, what does that it do? Uh, to the more severe side, it hmm. can lead to uh, a tightening of the uh, laryngeal muscles to okay. the vocal cord passage. So that is the most deadliest complication that you can have in here. That will be increased respiratory rate resulting in increased PCO2 washout, washout resulting in decreased ionized calcium, decreased, really the calcium is not low. This is just shift of calcium resulting in calcium that is ionized calcium, low ionized calcium which will lead on to tetany. Tetany, you have know that always the tetany, uh, usually we say the carpobidal spasm, all this torso sign, torso sign, sort of a tetany. But the most deadliest thing that he has, you said, you have the vocal cords laying down on either sides. So vocal cords, what will happen? This vocal cord can go into palsy. So instead of being like this opening, this is the opening for your vocal cords, it will go into tetany and as a result, there can be airway obstruction. So airway obstruction, that can result into strider. Mm -hmm. So this no strider is very important and again hoarseness of voice again is very important because why, uh, what could be the other differential that you can consider here. Suddenly somebody is coming with the anaphylaxis. anaphylaxis. That is again one of the most common differential diagnosis that you have to consider is anaphylaxis. So anaphylaxis they doesn't know so we have to go back the history and ask what exactly has happened. So anaphylaxis is another differential diagnosis they may, may need not have all the skin manifestation they can suddenly come with a respiratory issue so that is again very important anaphylaxis is one of the other differential diagnosis what could be the other differential diagnosis that you can consider here so first we have discussed regarding is hyperventilation syndrome or you can call it as panic attack one thing that you can consider is panic attack so suddenly a sudden emotional stress has happened and the patient is having increased respiratory rate, emotional disturbances, some anxiety suddenly. So that could be the uh, one reason. So that will be your topmost differential. Other will be anaphylaxis. 
What will be the other differential that you can consider here? Sir, here we made coming to us. We uh, have to consider spontaneous pneumothorax. Spontaneous pneumothorax. Okay, I will keep down the lines. Pneumothorax, spontaneous pneumothorax. Something in between. Not for uh, not very common in uh, adult patient, but in its children, someone who is coming with sudden onset of breathlessness foreign with body. foreign body aspiration. So that we keep it as the second, third differential foreign body aspiration. So panic attack, anaphylaxis, foreign body. And spontaneous pneumothorax can be a possibility. So, these are our probable differential with whatever history that we have got. Now we can continue. Coming to the briefing, sir, mm. is air entry was bilaterally equal. Bilaterally equal. So, your pneumothorax is out. Bilaterally equal. Okay. And also, foreign body causing obstruction, sometimes air entry can be still be okay. Uh, then. Uh, coming to the respiratory rate, it was 31 cycles. So, it is again on increase. Respiratory rate is increased. Saturation is maintained. So, at present, there is no compromise to the airway and breathing aspect. SpO2 is on 99, but the spread rate is on the higher side. Okay. Coming to the circulation part, all the peripheral buses were palpable mm. and the heart rate was the higher side of 120. Okay. Uh, and coming to the BP, it was 130 over 80. Okay. So he is not having hypotension. Yes. GCS was again 15 by 15. Exposure. Bilateral spasms were visible. Bilateral carpopedal spasm was visible. So, carpopedal spasm or tetany, features of tetany, you are able to elicit in this patient. Okay. While taking the blood pressure, we could elicit the spasm. Spasm, okay. So, blood pressure again, you can call this. What is the name of the sign? When is Chaucer sign and we have Chaucer sign, you can be able to elicit that. Okay, fine. Sir, at that point of time, I was considering a panic attack. So okay. I asked my uh, nursing staff to put into large bore IV cannula. Two large bore IV cannula, fine. A okay. uh, large bore IV mm. cannula. Mm. And I have also started the patient on a uh, rebreathing mask. Okay, so uh, I have to know a rebreathing mask. So what is basically a rebreathing mask? Where you uh, breathe in the carbon dioxide. Okay. Uh, so primarily, you have a mask. Mm -hmm. You have a mask. And usually when you look into it, it will be having valves on this either sides. Mm -hmm. Then you will have a connection to the oxygen source to a two weeks like this. Mm -hmm. And you will have a large reservoir bag attached to it. Mm -hmm. So that is how usually a non-rebreathing or a rebreathing mask will look like. So when you have a rebreathing mask, what is here not? It is not an oxygen delivery device. This valve will be closed. This both the side valve will be closed. And there is no need to connect to the motor also. So what is happening? We are connecting to this patient. Patient is exhaling into this bag. And the same breath, same air is rebreathing it back. So that is called as rebreathing. So that is why it is called as a rebreathing mask. So basically, NRBM, if you add an N before that, it is a non rebreathing mask where we will give it for hypoxia patient. But RBM is not an oxygen delivery device, it is basically used for hyperventilation syndrome where the patient can breathe his own uh, exhale. The, Okay, so that is what is called as a rebreathing mask. Okay, continue. Coming to the adjuncts to primary survey, mm. I've asked So, you have done adjuncts, what you have done? One is you have given a rebreathing mask to the patient, and second thing that you have done is an IV access to the patient. Why you want an IV access? He can go into carpopedal spasm at any point of time, or carpopedal spasm, maybe into uh, laryngospasm at any point of time. That is the latest complication. So, we need to give an uh, calcium gluconate and all, we need an IV access. For that reason, we have put an IV access. Then you have asked for a blood gas. So, what was the pH? You have commented as respiratory alkalosis. 7.5. 7.5 pH. So, it is on the higher side. What was the PCO2? PCO2 was 24. PCO2 of 24. Okay. It is on the lower side. What was the bicarbonate? Bicarbonate was 20. 20. Bicarbonate was 20. Again, on the lower side. So, primarily, you are dealing with an a respiratory issue, it is an alkalosis, so respiratory alkalosis. So, you have come for a conclusion. So, that is respiratory alkalosis. So, calcium, this is what calcium is, this ionized calcium. Not our routine calcium, what we check, this is ionized calcium. It is on the lower side. What, why it is on the lower side? What is the normal value of the ionized calcium? Up to 1.5. 1.5, 1.2, you can consider. What is the lower limit would be around 1.2. 1.2, you can take it as uh, normal, maybe 1.5 is the normal upper limit. So, one point, point eight is definitely on the lower side. So, uh, uh, calcium low of point eight. So, why there is hypocalcemia? Can you just explain the mechanism of hypocalcemia here? Yes, sir. Uh, in our body, we hmm. have a calcium in three different forms. Okay. That is, the first one is... Uh, three forms, okay. Ionized form. Ionized. Ionized, which is 50%. Then 40% is protein bound. Protein bound. 
the remaining 10 percent is combined with anions. So 10 percentage, sorry, combined 14, 40 combined is 10 percentage. So this is reflecting to your ionized calcium, what you are getting here. Okay. The so ionized calcium is acti actually the active form of calcium. Mm. So when the patient is hyperventilating, mm. the patient is going into a state of alkalosis. Okay. Decreased H plus. Decrease H plus. Decrease in H plus. Okay. So decrease in H plus. So the albumin mm. uh, gives more amount of uh, negative site or uh, uh, negative charge sites okay. for the calcium to bind up. Okay. So more calcium will go and start binding with albumin. albumin. So albumin and real calcium will bind. So the protein bond form, form will be in for what will happen to the protein bond form? They will increase. They will increase. So but resulting in decrease in the ionized calcium. But the total calcium remains normal. Total calcium remains normal. So that is the thing. When you check for your serum total calcium that will be normal. But only thing that you will be able to accept is in the decrease in the ionized calcium. So that is ionized calcium. Then what is this character calcium? Can, that is the total calcium, right? Yes. This is the total calcium. What do you call as total calcium? So we always do a correction for albumin. Mm -hmm. Albumin, you have to take normally, you can take albumin level as 4. So suppose this patient is having an uh, albumin of 2 and calcium is 7. Total calcium. So, how will you correct this calcium? Uh, we have to use the correct calcium formula. So, what is the formula? Uh, so, every one decrease of calcium. albumin. Albumin. We need to add. We need to add how much? 0.8 to the calcium. To the calcium value. Suppose, as I said, albumin is taken as normal as 4. So, there is a 2 drop in albumin. So, 2 drop of albumin. We need to add 1.6 to the total calcium. So calcium is 7. So 7 plus 1.6 with 1.6 which is 8.6. So in total the character calcium is normal. But here the character calcium is 7.2. So that is the correction. For every 1 decrease of albumin you need to add point in calcium. So albumin take normal as 4. Suppose uh, calcium is 7 and albumin is 2. This is the formula and what we have shown here. And ECG, where you want an ECG? Sir, I wanted to look for a QTC prolongation. QTC prolongation, which is very common with hypocalcemia. Okay, so what was the ECG showing? It was just showing a sinus, sinus tachycardia. Okay, then. Coming to the sample history, mm. uh, my patient is a 25 year old male. Okay. He is a non case of a psychiatric disorder. Okay. Specifically, uh, and clomazepam. Why he is taking for psych what psychiatric depressive disorder? Depressive disorder. He is having depressive disorder. Now he has come with probably an anxiety episode. Yeah. Okay. He was talking his, to his friends uh, regarding his unemployment issues. Suddenly, he had a, a crying episode, and after which he started. He started having. Okay. So, acetylopram and clonazepam. So, acetylopram is what is the class of drug? SSRI. SSRI. So, uh, the chance of toxicity is very, very less with this SSRI. But even if it can happen, it can happen with this acetylopram. They can have put serotonin syndrome, and clonazepam is again a class of benzodiazepine. So, uh, basically, a small uh, mood stabilizer. And then uh, sedative is on right now. Okay. Then coming to the treatment part, which oh. we have done. First, we have asked the patient uh, staff to give a rebreathing mask. Rebreathing mask, RPM. Okay. Suppose you don't have an RPM, what do you use? I would use a plastic mask. If you don't have a plastic, you can use a normal Hudson mask. Normal or Hudson mask you can use. Don't connect to oxygen. Just any paper bag or anything will do. But in a hospital setting, you can even use your Hudson bag. Even if it doesn't have a reservoir bag, we can use that. Then calcium opening. So the uh, patient was still, uh, even after using rebreathing mask, the patient okay. was still having spasms which are painful to him. Okay. So we decided to administer calcium group. So what is the dose of calcium group? 10 ml, 10%. 10 ml, 10%, 10 ml, 10 ml, 10 ml of calcium group. That is important, group. Because we have calcium chloride also available that you cannot administer in a peripheral line. Central line for that over 10 minutes. So that is the usual thing. You will not administer it faster because of irritability and sudden cardiac arrhythmia. So 10 ml of 10 percentage calcium glucanate was given to him. Okay. Continuous cardiac monitoring, we administered calcium glucanate. Okay. So that is the more important thing. Then reassurance you have done. Then anxiolytics. So he is already on an anxiolytic. So uh, what advice he needs might be he needs some 
counseling and all those things. That is the only thing that we can offer him. Already he is on an acetylopram with uh, clonazepam. Maybe uh, he might would have skipped his doses. Maybe another angio anxiolytic or adjunct therapy you need to think of. Okay. No? That is just the picture. Yeah. Again, we will think mask. Yes. Okay. Fine. So, this is the mask that I was telling for. This is the reservoir yes, bag which is cut here. And this valve will be both this valve and on the other side will be closed. So, no air will be escaping through that. Okay. Then this is a paper, paper bag. You can use either a paper bag like this also. Fine. Then, what is a sad person score? What is sad person score? So, the sad person score is actually used to uh, for a scoring for depression. Okay. In which the sex is male, we give a score of 1. Mm. When the age is less than 19 and more, more than 40. Basically, this is used and applied in a person who is having suicidal thought or depression coming to the ED. Whether we need to admit him or we can, whether he can go home. So, for that reason, you can use the sad person score. So, uh, sex is male, the more predominant to have depressive illness and their more risk factors are high. Age less than 19, more than 21, again high. Depression or hopelessness, yes, this is a main patient. Age, it is not so, this is not there for him. He has depression and hopelessness there. Previous attempt of any uh, attempts or any psychiatric care, yes. Psychiatric care, yes. Excessive alcohol or drug abuse, no. Uh, then uh, rational thinking loss, no. Rational thinking loss is not there. Separate or diverse, not separated, so it is also not there. Organized or a serious attempt, no. He didn't do any attempt, he just had a panic attack. No social support, he has a family to support him. Yes, so there is no issue with that. Stated future in the definitely yes, he has. Because uh, he was not getting any job. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, total score has come to 4. So, what is your impression? Uh, he needs an, uh, uh, a close monitoring. Okay, he needs a close monitoring. So, uh, SADS person score is going to be used for patient with uh, suicidal attempts coming to the ED. Okay. You have, uh, anything else to add on? Uh, regarding calcium gluconate, yes, calcium chloride. Okay, calcium gluconite, calcium gluconite. I will write it here. Gluconite. Can you just tell about calcium gluconate? Uh, calcium gluconate is usually given as 10 ml, 10 ml, 10 ml, 10 ml. Okay. I'll be over 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay. Then it contains an element of calcium of 92. 92? 92. 92 milligrams. Elemental calcium. Yes. Elemental calcium. Okay. We can administer calcium gluconate till this passing stops. Maximum 30 ml of calcium 30 ml. Max will be 30 ml. Maximum dose 30 ml. Okay. Hmm. And at times we have to go for a calcium gluconate infusion. Infusion. Very rarely in this panic attack we doesn't need only when we have a hypocalcemia. Calcemia, we, we usually post thyroidectomy or anything else, you need to have infusion. Routinely, this is just circled by itself. This is just a shoot of calcium, it will circle by itself. So, that is regarding your calcium yes. gluconate. Now, you can uh, brief me uh, regarding calcium, calcium chloride. Calcium chloride, it just what, how much time per time than uh, calcium? Three times more Three per time. Three times more per time. Three times more per time than calcium gluconate. You need a like central line right? because of irritability. Central venous catheter is needed. Then it contains 272, 272 milligrams. So 3 times. That is 3 times 92 into 3, 272. So that is the elemental calcium consisting of. So this is the difference between your calcium chloride and calcium gluconide. But when you have a, a significant patient with the hypocalcemia, you can do calcium chloride. Maybe the dosing, you need a center line, that's the only difference. But you don't have a center line, you can continue with uh, uh, your calcium group. Anything else you have on? Uh, whenever a patient comes, sir, we have to uh, always send for a serum algorithm okay. to look for a corrected calcium. Okay, otherwise you can just order a corrected calcium. They automatically do the albumin and this thing. Otherwise, you have to do a send a separate serum calcium and albumin. Okay. Anything else? Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.